Anna and Manus were just talking about the new uh, finance minister. Let's start there because I think many people are wondering uh, what uh, you think about the turmoil that existed. You have the last finance minister leave after only, what, eight months in office. Now you've got someone that you know fairly well in this job. Is, 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 and we saw the Rand rally a bit. Is, is this, do you think, going to continue to reinsure investors that maybe South Africa is on a better track? Look, I mean, firstly, I'd, uh, I'd worked with all finance ministers of uh, a post-apartheid uh, uh, South Africa. Um, uh, the correction that you have seen in the currency had to take place uh, because the weakness that you saw in the rand uh, uh, last week and uh, early this week had to do with is the finance minister staying or is finance minister uh, going. It didn't have anything to do with the capability of the finance minister to do uh, to do his job. And I think that with uh, Tito Mboweni coming, uh, coming in, what you are having is you are having a minister who was involved in framing the macroeconomic architecture of a democratic uh, South Africa. And not only that, from where we are sitting as the central bank, he was at the forefront of formulating the inflation targeting regime uh, in South Africa. So now that he's in this very important seat, and you obviously know him well, what impact do you think he can have? Well, um, he is a minister in uh, a government. From where we're sitting in the central bank, we are responsible for, uh, for monetary policy. Uh, the constitution of the republic says that uh, we must conduct monetary policy independently and without fear or favor. But there must be regular consultation between the, uh, the South African Reserve Bank and uh, the, finance, uh, the finance minister. And um, at least we will be having somebody who had been, has run the central bank for 10 years and, uh, and three months. And, um, and we are looking forward to working with him. So, uh, and this has been a bit of an issue lately, central bank independence. And I have to say that the United States is the same thing. The Treasury Secretary and the head of the Federal Reserve meet often. So it's very common to have that kind of relationship. Many people would say it's important to forming good policy. But as a central bank chief, do you have any concern that uh, uh, the finance minister would not? I, you, you assume he, too, is a firm supporter of central bank independence in South Africa? Uh, I don't have to make that assumption. He is an advocate of central bank independence. And I would expect of him to continue on that trend and actually uh, defend and protect the uh, independence of the South African Reserve Bank. More importantly is that when he takes his oath of office, in his oath of office, he commits to abide and respect and protect the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. And the independence of the South African Reserve Bank is enshrined in the, uh, uh, in the constitution. And may I also say that uh, in all the years that I have been in the South African government, uh, in the Treasury and in the Central Bank, I have not encountered a situation where a president, past or present, a minister of finance, past or present, had ever attempted to instruct the Reserve Bank how to conduct its business. In other words, we have not had politicians in South Africa interfering with the independence of the Reserve Bank. And I do not think that uh, any one of South African politicians would want to become an exception to that rule. Emerging markets, Federal Reserve rate hikes, Emerging market turmoil. This is one of the two big issues that I am told is going to be discussed over and over again uh, in many contexts in the meeting this week. Um, what, is, what do you see now when the people say the Federal Reserve has to be more cognizant of how its actions in an increasingly globalized world affect other countries, especially emerging markets? Well, it's not a new conversation. When the Fed embarked on uh, quantitative easing and other advanced economy central banks embarked on quantitative easing, the same issues uh, came. It was uh, to be cognizant of the effect of your actions on uh, uh, the other economies, so much so that the IMF has to, um, as part of its surveillance, give a report about the spillovers uh, from the policies of the uh, the advanced economies, and I don't think that the Fed is reckless. I'm sure they take account uh, of these things, but understand that they are the Federal Reserve of the United States of America, they are the Federal Reserve Bank of the world. Um, so I do not think that they act, uh, they act recklessly. I'm sure they have, I've got no doubt they take these things into account. But from what we are standing, um, 
what we are seeing playing out is what we had expected would play out as policy normalization uh, returns. We expected that as policy normalization sets in and the Fed tightens policy, uh, there will be a repricing of financial assets um, uh, globally, and especially in emerging, uh, in emerging markets, and also more importantly, that you will see a realignment of, uh, uh, of exchange rates. What we didn't foresee was that this could be taking place at a time when you had escalating trade tensions, which then complicates the, the whole picture. What does this all mean for the RAND? What does it all mean for your central bank's policy? I know you had a rather dovish member just uh, leaving the board. Uh, your stance on inflation, your stance on supporting the RAND. What is that going to mean in the, in, the, in the weeks and months ahead? I don't know how you arrived at the other member being dovish. What if I tell you is the hawkish member who has left? You will not be able to figure that one out. Uh, but uh, the point here is that the, 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 this change in um, sentiment uh, globally uh, affects capital flows. Uh, we have seen that capital flows to emerging markets have slowed down. And in the case of others, uh, you have seen the flows actually uh, reversing. Um, and that we expected. And as the flows do that, if the flows reverse or they slow down, it's bound to fit itself in the exchange rate. The question here is what is the policy reaction function? And the policy reaction function is a very clear one. From uh, South Africa's side, as a small open economy, our view is that we are an inflation targeting country and we will react to the second round effects from the depreciation of the currency rather than uh, react to the movement in the currency.